What's up everybody, Vin Teaches Math here, and today I want to show you all how to sketch rose curves without a calculator. So we got two examples here, but first up is to sketch the polar curve r equals 5 cosine 2 theta. Now, the steps for this I have here, so you can just follow this checklist. But a big part of doing these questions without a calculator is knowing what to count by in your table. And you should be counting by pi over 2 times n, where n is the coefficient of theta. So if we write our coefficient of theta, 2, that tells us we should be counting by pi over 4. Now, we don't have to count by this, but it just makes creating your table way more efficient when it comes to sketching it later on. So that tells us when we make our table of values, so we'll make a, we're going to make a really big table here too, that we're counting by pi over 4. So we have our angle theta, and what is our radius based on that? So going forward here, we start off with an angle of 0 radians, and if we were to substitute 0 in, 5 times cosine of 0 is 5, but then you might see why we're doing this in a moment. If we were to plug in the next value, pi over 4, we could do the work on the side. 5 times cosine 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2 gives us 0. So then our radius shrinks back to 0. And then we could also record these values here on the side. We would have 0, pi over 4. And you'll notice my graph is already cut into angles corresponding to what we're counting by. Pi over 4 is 45 degrees. So that's why I have these lines here. So you have pi over 4, and then next would be pi over 2. Then we have 3 pi over 4. Let's just make that a little neater. So 3 pi over 4, then this would be pi radians. Then we have 5 pi over 4. And we've got 3 pi over 2. And then the last one here would be 7 pi over 4. And then we'd have 2 pi. And if you're not sure where I'm getting this, just do pi over 4 plus pi over 4 plus pi over 4, and it'll give you all of these here. So now to go back to our table, we have pi over 4, pi over 2. But then if you notice, when we plug in pi over 2, 5 times cosine 2 times pi over 2 is pi. Sends us, uh, I'm sorry, whoops, little mistake there. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. So then the radius would be negative 5. And I think you might see what's going on here. For the next value, 3 pi over 4. When we plug that into the equation, it's going to bring us back to 0. So for the remaining values, we could just follow this pattern. 5, 0, negative 5, 0, 5, 0, negative 5, 0. So then this one here, without even looking, I know is going to be 5. And then for 5 pi over 4, which is next, we have 0. 3 pi over 2 goes to negative 5. And then we have two more values. 7 pi over 4 brings us to 0. And then 2 pi brings us back to 5. So now the ending part here is how to sketch this. So we go in the direction of 0 radians, which is facing this way. And we go out positive 5 units. So we're facing to the right, and we go out in that same direction. So that's how we start this, is we're going this way. But then this is the part that you have to pay attention to. It's, this is where it gets a little tricky, but that's why I have everything color-coded. The first region, if you want to call it that, is the space between 0 and pi over 4. That's the stuff I have colored in green here, between 0 and pi over 4. And if you notice, the radius between 0 and pi over 4 is shrinking back to 0. So that means when I trace the rose curve in this section, my radius should be getting smaller and going back to, whoops, stray mark there. It should be going back to the origin. So as I go in this green section here, from 0 to pi over 4, my radius should be shrinking back to the origin. Now, this is where things get a little bit more complicated. From pi over 4 to pi over 2 is the yellow section here. And... From pi over 4 to pi over 2, the radius is going from 0 to negative 5. 
And what that tells us is that we're not going to be drawing anything in this yellow section. You see how this section over here is also coated yellow because when we're going in the opposite direction as our radius becomes negative, that means we should be, instead of going in this section, go in the opposite section. From geometry, you learned about vertical angles and understanding that concept helps you understand like where you should be drawing the second part. So as the radius goes negative, we should be drawing in the opposite section here. So we're going from the origin and instead of opening out in the positive five direction, we're opening in the negative direction here. Now, the next section is from pi over two to three pi over four. That's this light pink section here. And in that section of the graph, from pi over two to three pi over four, the radius is going from negative five back to zero. So that means the radius is shrinking in the opposite direction. So we're not gonna be drawing the graph shrinking this way. We're gonna be starting at pi over two, negative five, which is down here. And the radius is shrinking back to zero. So we're gonna draw this part in here. Okay, now for the next part in light blue, that's between three pi over four and pi, the radius goes from zero and it extends out five units. So if we make our point at pi five, we're facing pi radians and we go out five units. Once again, we're going from a radius of zero out to a radius of five. So it's, the radius is increasing in the positive direction in this light blue section here. So we'll make that a little bit neater and there it goes. Now the next section is in the green from pi to five pi over four and from pi to five pi over four, the radius goes from five back to zero. So that means the radius is going to be decreasing in this section back to the origin. Now for the section in yellow here, five pi over four to three pi over two, we're going from a radius of zero to negative five. So we're not gonna redraw this petal we're gonna be going in the opposite direction. So instead of going this way, we're going into the other yellow section, but facing the opposite. So we're gonna go outward, okay? Once again, I just wanna make this neat so the end result looks good. So once again, from five pi over four to three pi over two, instead of going in the positive direction, our radius is going to negative five, so we open in the opposite section. From three pi over two to seven pi over four, the radius goes from negative five to zero. So that means instead of shrinking back to zero in this side, we're shrinking back to zero on the opposite side. And then from seven pi over four to two pi, where we are going from a radius of zero to a radius of five in the positive direction. So we're staying in this light blue section. And if we look here, uh, I'm not the greatest artist in the world. I'll label the uh, values here to show that we went out five units. But um, we uh, have sketched the rose curve. It has four petals. Anytime the coefficient is even to find the number of petals, you just double it. Uh, but this would be a sketch of R equals five cosine two theta. So we went through all of this. All right, now for another example, uh, and look, if you have a calculator, these go way faster, but I think it's good to understand the concept of where these graphs come from. So same idea, except now uh, delta theta is going to be a little bit different. It's gonna be pi over two times n equals three. So the change in theta this time is pi over six. So if you notice here, pi over six corresponds to 30 degrees. That's where we're getting all this stuff from. So then here, what we want to do, uh, we're going to make the table. And this table, we could actually stop it a little bit sooner. And you'll see why in a moment. So if we start, we have 0. And I'll write it on here first. So 0, and then pi over 6. And then pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. This is 90 degrees, or pi over 2. So we have one pi over six, two pi over six, three pi over six, four pi over six is the same thing as two pi over three. And then this would be uh, five pi over six. And then six pi over six is just pi. Then we've got seven pi over six. Eight pi over six reduces to four pi over three. 
And then 9 pi over 6 reduces to 3 pi over 2. And then 10 pi over 6 reduces to 5 pi over 3. And then we have 11 pi over 6. And then 12 pi over 6 is 2 pi. But this table, when we make the values, so we have pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, and then a few more, 5 pi over 6. We could actually stop this at pi, and you're going to see why in a moment. But now if we substitute 4 times sine of 0 is 0, then when we plug in pi over 6, we'd have 4 times sine, and then 3 times pi over 6 is pi over 2, and this is just equal to 4. And then you could check me on this, but then the pattern is still the same. That's why this first step is so crucial. Okay, uh, it's very important that you uh, use that pi over 2n trick here, because that helps you generate the most important values for sketching. All right, and now the second step set to sketch the dotted lines based on the angle. So if your angle is 30 degrees, each quadrant is 90, so you should be cutting them into three pieces. And when I draw the line, I connect it all the way through, almost like I'm cutting a pizza. So I draw a line all the way through here uh, from the first to the third quadrant, and same thing from the first to the third quadrant. And then this one goes from the second to the fourth quadrant, second to the fourth quadrant here. Now uh, we're going to graph the points here. So 0, 0 is where we're starting. And we'll go at red this time. And my graph is going from 0, 0 to pi over 6, 4. So that means at pi over 6, I'm going to be out here 4 units. But from 0 to pi over 6, that's this light brownish section here. My radius is increasing in the positive direction, which means it's going out like this. And then from pi over 6 to pi over 3, that's this light blue section. The radius decreases from 4 to 0 in the positive direction. So that means I'm staying in this blue section and not going here. So we're going back to 0. Then from pi over 3 to pi over 2, this is where things get a little wacky. From pi over 3 to pi over 2, that's the yellow section. We're going from 0 to negative 4. So instead of increasing to 4 in this direction, we're going to be increasing to 4 in the opposite direction. Like this. And we'll just adjust that. And we'll see how we're going 4 units out this way. Um, now, where are we? From pi over 3 to pi over 2. Now we're going from pi over 2 to 2 pi over 3. That's the green section. But you see how we're going from negative back to 0. So we're passing through all the negatives between negative 4 and 0, so that means we're looking opposite. And the radius is getting smaller if it's going from negative 4 to 0. Like It's a weird concept because a radius technically isn't negative uh, when you think about it in terms of a circle. But uh, in polar graphs, a negative radius means just go in the opposite direction. But from negative 4 to 0, the graph is pulling back in. So I know like technically it sounds like I'm... Um, you know, like breaking the rules of math, talking about a negative radius, but it just means the graph is shrinking back to the origin. And now the next section here is from 2 pi over 3 to 5 pi over 6. That's the pink section. And in this section, the radius goes from 0 out to 4 units. So at 5 pi over 6, the graph goes out 4 units. So in the pink section here, we're starting at 0 and we're increasing... Let's make that a little neater. I'm not the greatest artist in the world, but let's try. All right. So from 2 pi over 3 to 5 pi over 6, the radius increases out to 4. And then from 5 pi over 6 to pi, this light green section here, the radius decreases from 4 back to 0. Here like this. Now the reason why you might be able to see it, we could stop the graph here, is we've drawn the entire graph. 4 sine 3 theta, any times... Anytime that the coefficient n is odd, an odd coefficient means that there are only three petals. If it was, let's say, 4 sine 5 theta, this would be 5 petals. Okay, so I know that I'm done because the coefficient tells me there's going to be three petals. And if it's even, 
remember if this was like uh, I don't know three sine four theta um, then we would have eight petals for something like that so just a little bit of background concept here for the odd graphs um, you could usually stop them sooner uh, because they will complete the full cycle. If I were to go out to 2 pi, I would just draw the graph again over itself, so it's pointless to do that. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on sketching rose curves. If you found this video to be helpful, please click on the like and subscribe button below. It helps me grow the channel. Also, if you have any requests for future videos, you can leave them in the comment section. And thank you all for watching.